AM 1060 WMEL. This is Joe Stecker, folks, your host for Helping Seniors. Helping Seniors is a radio arm of uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. We are a nonprofit organization, and we are designed to educate, inform, and connect seniors and those who care for seniors to resources. That's what we do. We don't compete with any other people. A lot of people think we do. We try to complete the care equation. And, folks, I think Kay will verify today through the course of our conversation with you. And what we're going to do today is sort of do a wrap-up of what's happened in 2015, the progress we've made, the importance of you, our listeners, understanding what it is that we really do so that you can tell your friends and others that you come across that there are so many ways to get help, but you have to know about them. You have to have an organization that will do their very, very best to connect you with those resources. And that's what we do. And um, anybody that takes public funding, whether it be from the government or through the United Way or the county, if they are providing services or supposed to provide services to people, and we're aware of it, then I give you my word that Kay and I will do everything we can to make you aware of how these people should, and the operative word is should, be helping you. Not always do attorneys, nonprofits, and organizations that purport to be of assistance or wanting to help, not always do they do that. So it's very, very important that those of us that recommend to you organizations, services, resources, it's important that we get feedback from you so that we can know what it is that these organizations are doing or what they're not doing. It's extremely important. And I'll just list some of our sponsors for the first part of our show so that you can see who the people are that really help us. Uh, three, three of our newest sponsors include eye care. Uh, I'm sorry, ear care, audiologists. And since I wear hearing aids, I know the importance of getting the right kind of ear care. Uh, I know in my own case... I thought it was my hearing aids I couldn't hear. It turned out I had a piece of wax lodged up on the inner ear and the hair follicles, and the audiologist had a devil of a time getting it out. And she told me that I never would have been able to get that out there. But what that was doing was blocking the path for the, for the uh, sound channel for the hearing aid. So unless that was clear, there was no way the hearing aid was going to work. So sometimes... This is the kind of thing that we need to know. We think that what we're getting is going to work, and it doesn't. So we need to know what you don't know about what you should know. Does that make sense? So sponsors, eye care, ear care, Handy Pro of the Space Coast. It's an organization that does handyman-type services for senior citizens. That's something that we get more calls on for people who need that. And a new one is Riverview Senior Resort area. It's a retirement-type community, right, Kay? Assisted Living and Memory Care in in In, Palm Bay. In Palm Bay. And that's opened up, and that's one of our newest sponsors. Mm -hmm. So included along with that is Gentiva Home Health Care, the Eye Institute, Solid by Dental Implants, Bill Johnson Elder Law Journey, WMEL AM 1060, Wustoff Hospital Systems, Levin Home Care, Atlantic Shores Rehabilitation, and Wendy Handy of the Dale Sorensen Real Estate. So listen, just think about these organizations I'm, I'm telling you about. All of these organizations in some way assist seniors. Now, to reach Kay, how do they reach you, Kay? Area code 321 321- Four seven three seven 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 zero, and I do want to say that if you happen to call and you don't get me on the phone, I could be talking to another senior caller. So by all means, leave a message, and I promise we'll call you back as soon as we can. And just so you understand our our communication system, folks, and I think it's important that you do. 
we have a virtual office system. That means that while the main phone is with K, and right now we're in temporary office spaces, we uh, we left where we were, and we're going to open a new office, and I'll give you the location after the first of the year. I don't want to say anything until we get it all locked down, but we'll have a new office. But all the phone calls that Kay doesn't answer go on to her computer, my computer, and another computer. So there's three computers that pick up those calls. So what we do, Kay and Carrie and, and, and me, we talk to each other periodically about what has been done or who has done what with the phone messages that are left. Every caller is followed up on. And every time Kay or myself, we give advice, one of us follows up to ensure that whatever we recommended for the person has worked. What else would you say? Put it, verbalize it. Kay is there nodding her head. And I know you can't hear her or her, her nod her head, but what am I missing or what have I not said, Kay? Well, I also want to say that when a message is recorded, it not only is recorded on all the computers and the voicemail, but I actually got it set up so that I get alerts on my smartphone even. So I'm never going to be escaping you. And sometimes, there, you know, we get a, an occasional call in the evening or a weekend. I'm still going to call them back because if I keep that smartphone on me, it's going to give me a little chirp. And it's going to let me know, and I can actually hear that message on my phone as well. But one thing I wanted to mention to our listening audience here, and for those who want to call in, and we're starting to get a lot more calls from people saying, I heard about helping seniors through a friend. So that's good in the fact that people are really, really talking about helping seniors of Brevard. And the one thing, Joe, I think it's really important to mention is the fact that I don't just give out a telephone number. I ask my callers to call me back. Let me know the results of the resources that I've given them. Nine times out of ten, they will. For those who don't call back, I'll personally follow up with them. And guess what I always hear, Joe? I'm glad you called back. Not only that, but I hear, thank you. I've never had an agency take the time to call me back, see how I'm doing, and to follow up with me. Never. And they say, this really just touches me. I had a lady on the phone yesterday that was from Minnesota, and she said that there was an agency similar to Helping Seniors at Rivard where she lived. And she said they had the most kind, courteous person on the other end of the phone. And she You're talking said, about Helping Seniors? Oh, well, I'm getting there. She okay. said when she called the agency in Minnesota, but she also paralleled that to us. She said, you are the same. You've taken the time. I don't feel rushed. I feel like I've developed a relationship with you, and I feel comfortable talking to you. That's a major, major accomplishment because people are so used to maybe picking up the phone, being on the phone on hold for 25, 30 minutes, getting frustrated. And then when they finally do get a person, they feel like they're very rushed. So I often find that when a caller calls, they may have some one thing in mind that they're requesting information. But guess what, Joe? It's not just one. It could be several things that they really need assistance in finding. Yeah, well, that's important. And you know, it's also important, folks, that you have to be very careful about mentioning uh, names or uh, types of assistance that people uh, get because sometimes people make a connection and connect to dots. But I know several of the people I've talked to have told me they don't mind me talking about their situation if they think if I think it will help somebody else. And I I'm thinking of a situation that started about uh, five weeks ago. Okay, where. Uh, a person called us, uh, called you, and mm-hmm. uh, was extremely upset because they had lost a job and they stood a chance of losing everything. Mm-hmm. And this person felt that uh, the uh, job placement agencies in Broward County really weren't helping. Uh, nobody really was helping him. And uh, you asked me to call him. I called the gentleman. And uh, he was pretty straight with me. And uh, we had a dialogue for 10, 12 minutes, and then we talked some more, and then I 
told me what I would do. I made some phone calls. I met with somebody. Uh, we talked about uh, working with uh, to get a, a part of his uh, record changed. So there's some other things that the real truth came out because when Matt was powerless, he didn't have the assets or the capability to get to the right people to change his situation. Right. We did. And I made a phone call and then met in person with another person of another very strong agency, then a person of another strong agency. And and, and all these agencies are working together now to help the gentleman. Mm-hmm. I got an email. And I didn't even tell you this. I got an email from him today before I came out to do the radio show. And it was quite a lengthy email. And I could tell it was really upbeat because he was telling me how he just fell for the first time in three years that people really are trying to help him. Mm-hmm. I made a phone call to, to the person that runs Brevard Workforce, who I knew real, real well. They agreed to get involved again. This man went to him before. They didn't know the situation. Once I talked to him, they understood that it was a lot more serious than what uh, what they really thought it was. And so they got recommitted to it. And this is mm-hmm. part of... Uh, what a nonprofit organization that's uh, managed the right way and what their purpose and intent is, how they can help people. I, I don't care what the problem is that somebody throws at you or me over a telephone. Uh, there's darn few that we can't bring some type of uh, uh, satisfactory resolution to. We can't solve everything. Right. But uh, – by golly, most of the time you can solve a problem. We do. And I was mentioning to you on the phone yesterday too, Joe, the fact that, you know, some in my follow up and so forth, you know, I get a lot of calls from people who are on extremely limited incomes. But I'll give them food pantries, you know, maybe look at uh, getting a meal delivered every day through another agency and, and a variety of different resources. But the one thing that I cannot do is make those phone calls for you necessarily. So so some of the callers think, you know, well, I haven't had time to call. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, when you talked to me two weeks ago, you really were in, you know, pretty- dire straits. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, you want to help right away, and then you can't yeah. help yourself. And then you, you, well, that's my point. That's yeah. my point. You know, I can I can lead you to the water, but I can't force you to drink. Yeah. So. And, and, and a lot of it, folks, is, is us understanding what your real problem is. Uh, for instance, um, there was a well-publicized uh, story in the paper in Florida Day several weeks ago and talked about the person in there, how they uh, were living on a fixed income and uh, couldn't get this and a certain organization were helping them do that. turned out the things that they were said they were supposed to be helping the person, they weren't doing it. And I talked to the man myself and it turned out, unbeknownst to me, the guy had already called Kay. Kay was already working with this gentleman before the story even appeared in the paper. Right. And uh, the guy was a veteran of World War II. Mm-hmm. And his uh, his Social Security was roughly, it was, let's see, 1300 1300 a month. Mm-hmm. And according to the rules, VA aid and attendance, uh, if you, he was really very close to the cutoff point whether or not he would get the money for aid and attendance. Right. However, in my further discussions with the VA office, it turns out that if a person needs help with three or more activities of daily living, then that income level is bumped from roughly thirteen hundred and six dollars to seventeen hundred and six dollars, which put this man right well in the ballpark to get an additional fourteen hundred dollars a month. And folks, we find a lot of women oh, yes. who whose husbands served in World War Two or Korea, and one of the keys is that you can't be remarried if you did not get remarried, you still qualify for those benefits. And I can tell you, 
We have documented cases of of women living on eight and nine hundred dollars a month in food stamps. Right. That actually qualified for this new fourteen hundred and six dollars a month benefit, and plus a bunch of other stuff from the VA. Yeah, and but this is one of the things that I do when I have a caller call, Joe, is the fact that they may not even be thinking on those terms, but in talking to a a, a, a lady, a senior lady, and saying she may need maybe a little bit of work done around the house, she doesn't need, you know, she does, she can't really push the vacuum, you know, she needs that kind of help, and I'm. And one of the questions that I always ask my callers is, are you on a limited income? Why, yes. Could you give me approximately what that might be a month? And they'll give that to me. And I said, this helps me direct you into the appropriate resource as well. But then I said, wait a minute, were you married before? She said, well, yes, I lost my husband a few years ago. And I said, was he us in the service for 90 days, and out of that 90 days, did he serve one day of war? Well, yes. I said, are you familiar with the aid and attendance program? No, what's that? So, again, the information that we give with the radio, the TV, the print articles, the newsletter, all reaching out to help educate our seniors and their caretakers because it's not really publicized what all might be available to them. Yeah, I, That's and it. I, I know people will say, oh, people know about this. Folks, they don't. No. Uh, two days ago, I was in, uh, in a therapy office for my physical therapy, and uh, I started talking to a gentleman next to me. His wife was there. She was recovering from a stroke. And uh, he, uh, we got to talking. And this guy was a 30-year veteran, had no knowledge of the aid and attendance program had no knowledge that he, they qualified for home assistance. And here was this poor guy, barely able to walk himself, mm. that could get help with cleaning, cooking. He says, I'm not a very good cook, uh, uh, cook Mr. Stucker. I said, but are you aware that you know there are, there are resources? And, right. you know, Aging Matters is one of our resources here in the county. And people need to know about Aging Matters because Aging Matters gets money from the federal government, from United Way, and from the county to provide those Meals on Wheels, to provide in-home services, to provide case management, to to do the cleaning in the house, right. to do these things. They get paid to do this by the federal government. Right. So. A number that you can call, folks, is 639-8700. No, I'm sorry, 639-8770, 639-8770. Call that number. Tell them what your problem is. Tell them you need help. If you can't get the help, then call K at 473-7770. Right. Because, and the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is because if we continue in the future to ignore the fact that we have federal money under the, uh, gosh, the Federal Act of 18, 1965, the Area Agency on Aging, uh, oh, gosh, I'm trying to think of that, but it's for, for the Aging Assistance Act of 1965. Mm -hmm. It provides millions of care dollars across right. the United States. And Aging Matters gets those dollars, and that's what they're supposed to do with those dollars is to help people. So... If you need, if your doctor has said you have help with, need help with three or more activities of daily living, you and you meet certain income levels, then you qualify. A lot of people, uh, one of the things, Kay, you and I, and we'll talk, we've got about three minutes before the break, but mm -hmm. Medicaid eligibility. Uh, right. But most people think that hey, I don't want to, I don't want to go on Medicaid eligibility. I, I don't, I don't need that. You'd be surprised, folks. Uh, I've got general officers. Flag officers and the military retired that we help get on Medicaid because of the circumstances and everything that they found themselves in. They qualified. The part, the the key is knowing whether or not you're qualified. Now look at it this way: Let's say you are qualified for Medicaid. You don't know it. You don't have a Medicaid card. You get into a situation where you need assisted living. You don't have the money to go into assisted living. Exactly. Wouldn't it be better? to have the card in your hip pocket so that if the need comes up, you can get it and and get the help you need because 
you might end up waiting two, three, four, five, six months. And right now, there are 40,000 right. people on the waiting list in Florida for this type of care. Right. So get ahead of the power curve. Absolutely. What would you say, Kay? I totally agree. I was on the phone yesterday with an individual, and I was saying, you know, tell me, do you, are you, do you have Medicare? Do you have Medicaid? I have Medicare. This lady was in her early 80s, and I said, why haven't you looked at getting Medicaid? I said, what would happen if, heaven forbid, you you would need to go to an assisted living? You know, you may be put into a nursing home for 90 days while this whole process is trying to be put through, but you really are not needing skilled nursing. Maybe you just need assisted living. What would you do? I said, do you realize how expensive assisted living is today? Why, no. And I said, this is called kind of, you mentioned a lot with Bill Johnson, long-term yeah. care. And and so many people don't even think beyond, okay, I've got Medicare that's going to take care of everything. Medicare Wrong. does not pay for long-term care folks. Get, yep. get out of that mindset. It does yes. not pay for it. Medicare pays for skilled nursing care in your home, and it pays for hospital care. You have four coverages, A, B, C, and D. I'm right. not I'm not qualified to to give you the minute details about all four of those, but I can tell you they're all very they're all necessary, and that's why one of the very very good benefits of our Medicare program is Social Security. So there's just so much we yes. need to know. And when we come back after the break, uh, we want to talk about uh, how we work to get this kind of information to you and why it's so important and Kay will do a lot more talking about that but we're going to we'll take a quick break right now it's, it's uh, roughly about a three minute break and then stay with us and but I, before I, if I forget it before I end of the show today I do want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, well it doesn't seem like it's very cold here it's warm it's still Christmas right <laughs> happy holidays everyone yes we've yeah, got a I warm say, I still say Merry Christmas there but you go. stay with us we've got it we're gonna take a we're down to 15 seconds and then we're gonna take the break and come back with us because we got some pretty good information to talk to you after the break stay with us this is Joe Stecker folks from back live with the second half of uh Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. Um, that's our website, Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. Everything we do on the radio show, everything we do on television, everything, all our periodicals, all our media work is all archived on our website, all our programs, how you can help us financially, which you want to do that, it's all there. The sponsors for the second part of the show include Senior Scene Magazine. Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, Aldea Today, Seniors Helping Seniors, The Fountains of Melbourne, Beth Courtney of the Braswell Courtney Financial Team, Barbara McIntyre of Home Equity Specialist, uh, Canadian Meds of Melbourne, Wiederman Malik, Vita Offs Hospice, and uh, Wendy Handy of uh, Dale Sorensen Real Estate. Uh, you know, something that's um, has come up, Kay and I have talked about it, and we've had this lady named Barbara McIntyre on our a TV show a couple of times recently, and she's a home equity loan specialist. And well, I I I, I, I advise extreme caution for seniors. Uh, anytime you want to get yourself involved with um, whatever you do with your home, whatever you do, you might be smart about it. You don't want to get yourself involved in something that's going to cause you to lose your home. But uh, Barbara happens to be a person that can help you understand the difference between a home equity loan, a reverse mortgage, and in some cases, these things are good. They can help you. Other cases, they're very, very bad. That's why you need to talk to somebody. It's just like, and before I, I'm going to give, I will turn over to Kay, but she doesn't <laughs> know this, but uh, she brought uh, Something to my attention this past week, and it, it, it highlights something that I have talked about on the radio for 15 years. And that's when this show started, December 7, 2000, folks. We've been on the air starting our 16th year now. But be careful in hiring an attorney. Absolutely. Let's say you've got a problem, and uh, you call an attorney and say, I think i got a problem. Uh, do you uh, have a consultation? Can I? Can you talk to me? And the person says, "Yeah, three hundred dollars an hour." Hang the phone up, folks. Go find another attorney. You get an attorney that's willing to talk to you and listen to your case to see what you need. Now, having 
establish that parameter, let's say that you have a legal problem. Now, this is Joe's advice. Sometimes people call me and ask me for advice, and I would say this to a person. If you've got a problem that you're going to sue somebody for, for malpractice or something, they've done something wrong, if an attorney takes your case, they'll take it if they think they've got a pretty doggone good chance of winning it because that's how they get paid. Right. Now, on the other hand, if they say, well, I'll take your case at 200 or 300 an hour, start looking for somebody else, folks, because unless you can wrap your arms around the total cost of something, you don't know what you're going to sit yourself involved in. And why do I say this? Because it's happened to yours truly. I know. I've been there. I know what can happen once you make a commitment and you just think it's going to end next day or the day after. It's not true. Sometimes it takes weeks. And those billable hours really rack up. Now, those billable hours can rack up on a trial case because that's how they make their money. Right. The more they bill, the more they make. And they're going to work darn hard to win that trial because if they don't win a trial, they don't get paid. So this is why you have to be smart about going and engaging a doctor, getting an attorney, getting somebody to put the roof on your house. Check credentials. Find out what they've been doing. You know, to me, it's my money. I'm the ones that work for it. Not somebody else is going to provide my service. And I want to make sure that I'm going to get the right kind of people to help me. And that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. And Kay, tell people how we're going to try and, and, and help people in this coming in 2016, one of, one of our new programs. Well, and I also want to make a comment regarding any caution, you know, with an attorney or a contractor that says they want $3,000 up front. Up front, Joe. I've had many callers call me and say that I paid, I just paid this contractor $1,000, and guess what? He never showed up for the job. He took the money and ran. So it is really valuable advice that you're giving to the listening audience out there because you knew you do need to check the credentials. You do need to make sure that you've got the eggs in line here. Wait, but, okay, most of those things happen to those of us of advanced years. Sure. And if somebody comes, I'm 82, folks, and if somebody comes mm-hmm. after me to do something, I'm going to be extremely careful about what I commit myself to. I'm not afraid to fight them. But a lot of you listening don't have the knowledge, don't have the connections that I have, don't have a radio show, don't have a television show, don't have columns in newspapers. You can't fight. You need somebody to help you fight the battles. Exactly. That's one of the reasons we started this advocacy group over at Helping Seniors. Right, exactly. We're, we have a group of, of folks, people, that advocate for the needs of seniors. We did a survey in 2015, and the two greatest needs that you seniors, over 400 seniors, answered our survey request. The greatest needs were for financial assistance and for information. Both tied, 17% each. Right. So what we're doing now is we're getting ready to gear up. We are revising our survey, and we're going to reissue it, and we're going to work through the churches. We're going to work through the deacons. We're going to work through you. We're going to work through Aldea Today, Ebony News Today, Hometown News, Spotlight Magazine, and Senior Scene Magazine, right. where we'll reach thousands of people. Mm-hmm. What's important is for you to get off your duff and answer that survey. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I got a letter this past week. I opened it up. It was one of the surveys. I haven't even told Kay about this. There were two people that had responded on this one survey. There was not one good thing that they had to say in that survey. Mm-hmm. That was the most negative thing that I have experienced in all the years I've worked with seniors and requests for information. Wow. And so it told me something. It told me that the people that filled and checked out those blocks were very bitter people. Bitter. You know, if you're bitter, 
many times you've caused that bitterness yourself simply because you haven't tried That's true. to change the situation. And Kay said something to me, and she wanted to talk about it. I'm going to turn the show over to Kay because at this time of the year, people can, and perhaps the reason I got that bitter survey was because it was Christmas. It is the holiday season, and we often vent our spleen at times when we should be joyous, right. we're angry. And how, what is your comment on that? Well, please? you know, oftentimes I find, Joe, that I'll get a caller call, and they'll quite frankly just break down and cry on the phone. And so it's hard for me sometimes. i got to keep my calm and composure and everything and just say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to make it through. We're going to get you to the right resources here. Don't worry. But then a lot of calls come in and they say, you know, I just don't have anybody here. My family is living way out west. I'm just plain lonely. Can I just talk to you a few minutes? And I said, well, sure you can. I said, that's why we're here. We're here to help. We're here to listen. So this time of year, too, it's... You get a lot of people that maybe, and I know because I worked in a retirement community, and people, the sons or daughter, just drop mom or dad off into a skilled nursing and, and, and ignore them. You walked all all into the places, and you see the, the men or women and slunched over in their wheelchair, and nobody there to talk to. They're just, they're just going around in their wheelchair because they're going to be around other people people. So I understand, I empathize with those people who don't have family nearby. They're lonely. They just simply want somebody to talk to. So if you are in that category and you do call our telephone at 473-7770, we're here for you. And again, I feel very strongly the fact that not only are we trying to help educate people with the radio, the TV, the newsletter, the articles that you write, Joe, but it all comes back. And people do tear out that newsletter in Senior Scene Magazine and hold on to it. And I think that some of the callers that I've had over the last year and a half have basically had our number posted on the refrigerator because I've gotten calls from... Not just this last August, a year ago, August. And I'll look. I said, well, your name rings a bell to me. Let me look you up in our database. And I said, wow, what is it that we can help you with today? And they said, you know, I know that I've called the right place because you helped me the first time, and I know you can help me again. So that's rewarding. It's really important, folks. You know, uh, we uh, we can talk about all the stuff that we do, but if you don't know how... We try to promote uh, organizations like uh, Aging Matters that do get the federal dollars, that do supply the meals on wheels, that do these things and should be giving you the services that they're paid to do. We need to know if you're trying to get those services and you can't get them because accountability is extremely important. And, you know, this radio station has quadrupled. It's area of coverage. It goes all the way up to Jacksonville, down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, and it includes over way over on the other side of Orlando. So we're reaching a lot more people. And uh, Vern asked us to say the phone number again. Okay, give us the phone. Give them the phone number again for the, how to get will. you. Absolutely. It's area code 321-473-7770. Okay. Four seven three seven 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 zero. That's the phone number, folks. But you, you know, Kay has mentioned uh, radio and TV. This radio show reaches a lot of people. Uh, people say radio. Uh, people don't listen to radio anymore. They all listen to it on your car radio when you're driving someplace. You so tune in AM ten sixty and listen to what we have to say. Uh, we're on television uh, eighteen times a week now. We're on uh, channel 499, which is the uh, Space Coast Government Channel. Mm -hmm. We have a show every morning at 8.30, Monday through Friday. And starting from 4.30 to 5.30, we do two shows, Monday through Friday. So that's 15 shows there. And then on channel 199, there's a show on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I think it is. And there are differences, whether it's at 6.30 at night, 7 or 7.30. You have to just check it yourself and see. But 
But if you miss them, they're all archived on helping seniors of Brevard.org. Yeah, everything is archived, yes. folks. We'd be very foolish to put all this information out and not have it recorded someplace. But think about this. We started out in Florida today in 2007 with a column. Since then, we've added Hometown News, Senior Scene Magazine, Aldea Today, Ebony News Today, and uh, Spotlight, Spotlight Magazine. All those magazines publish our articles. We have the newsletter, and the newsletter articles are written by the people that I name as being sponsors of our services. So what we've tried to do is build a network of people, organizations, that can assist you and do their very best to help you work your way through this care system. It's not easy. It's very complicated. Right, Kate? Absolutely. And then one thing, too, about our partners slash sponsors, if we put them in that context, is the fact that each and every one of them are special professionals in their field. So when they participate in writing an article on our newsletter, it's coming from maybe a legal, an elder law attorney. Um, if they need dentures or they need implants, it's coming from a professional in that field. Everything we do is that educational, but each and every one of them specialize in that profession, which pretty much caters to seniors in addition to the fact that if I refer any of our callers to any one of them, I feel confident they are going to be taken care of. They're going to be trustworthy. They're not going to take advantage of the seniors. And so that's vitally important. So we've built relationships with these folks. Relationships is what it's all about. Uh, you know, uh, I had a lady that uh, out of the clear blue sky, uh, has followed our organization and my work for the last 20 years. And she called me up to say that uh, she had a 1992 Jaguar XJS V12, ruby red, pristine condition, 38,000 miles. She wanted to give it to us. I said, are you kidding me, Marge? She said, no, I want you to have it, Joe. So she said, I think John would want you to have it. Use it to help people. So in 2016, as soon as we get a car dealer to be the sponsor so that we have a place to really display this car, we will start selling tickets at $25 a pop, five for $100, and every ticket sold will go into the Helping Seniors Endowment, 10% of which every year will be put into another fund that we could spend that following year to help seniors that need dentures, that need special care, that need something that Medicare, Medicaid, or they can't afford themselves. We're not going to pay their rent. We're not going to do stuff like that. We're not going to do anything to enable somebody. We're going to do something to help people so that somebody else doesn't have uh, the chance to enable them to go further astray. Right. It's, it's it's different. Nobody else does that. You know, you read in the paper, the county commissioners are now contemplating taking away the $500,000 they give to county-based organizations. That doesn't make sense. It says, oh, we need that money to pave roads. Yes, roads need to be paved. Cancel something else out, but don't take away the very little bit of help that you give somebody. And for those of you to give it a United Way, United Way helps a lot of people, but it's acting as a closed-loop operation. An organization, new organization coming online to help people should all have a chance at a county or at publicly donated funds, folks. That's all I'm saying. Everybody should have an equal opportunity to apply for funds. Absolutely. That should be used for the good of the community. And just because you're a nonprofit and you say, I'm helping children or I'm helping grandchildren or I'm doing this or I'm doing that, doesn't mean that that's the end of the line. And, Joe, you know, the, the fact of the matter is many people are not aware that we do not have an aging plan in Brevard County. And the fact is, is that if we go by AARP standards, it could be one out of every two people in Brevard. That so, are seniors. That are seniors. Right. 
And so the need is there. Helping seniors, as Joe mentioned in opening up the show, is we're not trying to compete with any agency. But what we do is different in the fact that we not only take the incoming calls to help people be put in touch with the type of resources they're looking for, but the outreach, too. And we, we feel very strongly about helping our listeners, our readers, our watching TV on our shows and so forth, to become more educated, to become more informed. And that's what people have been wanting. They need to be more informed. Our survey's results, as you know, wraps it up. That's a nail on the head. So I bet you the next time around we put another survey out there, bet you bottom dollar, Joe, it'll come I back the same so. way. I, I hope we'll get a better return. But, you know, as we become more well-known within the community, more people are going to be want be involved. And I made a, a promise when I started this organization in 2011 that the finances of this organization would all be always be a matter of public record. Uh, we have designed this organization so that we can operate. And do everything we do, produce the radio, the television, the newsletter, do all this stuff with a minimum amount of money and employing five people. And we can do this with a budget of under $250,000. Those of you that have a business and you say you can produce 60 television shows a year, weekly radio shows, columns in five major periodicals and do all these other things to help people on $250,000 a year, I challenge you to tell me where you can get more bang for your buck. You know, once the endowment is put in place, and as we put it in place, there will be an accounting block in Senior Scene Magazine that shows how much is in that endowment, and I just got a $50 check from somebody sent in, and he marked endowment. It's going to go into the endowment Good. account. That's exactly where it will go. But you think about it. I had a, I spoke to a, a Rotary Club this past week. And at the end of the show, I, in my presentation, uh, the Rotary Club president says, I think we can help you sell those tickets. What if we had 15 Rotary Clubs throughout Park County helping us sell tickets. Yes. And all the proceeds go into a fund to help people. That would be amazing. And the fact is that, you know, when we talk endowment fund, Joe, that's put aside for helping people that are not able to financially help themselves, that really are desperate. Right. right. Okay. So I wanted to underscore that. Yeah. I, I, I always, my classic story is the guy that you referred to me one time that couldn't eat because he couldn't keep his teeth in his mouth. He had no right. bone structure left. Exactly. He needed new dentures. He couldn't afford the dentures. And right. we found a dentist that, believe it or not, folks, made a new set of uppers and lowers for the man for $250. And we got three or four people together and uh, we pulled some resources and we bought them for him. Right. But this is community spirit. This yeah. is community. This is what is being part of a team means. And uh, I want to also put something out there, too. If anybody is interested in making a donation, you can go to org and click that. We have PayPal set up on that. So if anything, the, if you've got the holiday spirit, help us help others as well, because Joe assures you it will definitely go to good use. It really will. And uh, you're getting at music now. Uh, we're just about to wind the show down. And uh, we have, this will be the last show, I guess. Yes, is the of last 2015. show of 2015. Yes. Uh, I want to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas. And uh, wish you every success for 2016. There are a lot of challenges both on the local and national level. Uh, we need to be involved. And so uh, I want to thank you, Kay, and for all our listeners for all the work that you've done to help people this, this past year. I know that you've helped over 700 families mm -hmm. get assistance and help. And yes. to me, that's what it's all about. So Merry Christmas to all. And... We wish you a blessed and successful and joyous 2016. Thanks, Kay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.